Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. Some of our viewers, viewers are running into a little bit of errors while making this tutorial or following it. And the error that they get is the is admin.php undefined method can online too. Uh, Javel is not the only one. Um, Derek is also another one that is experiencing the same issue. So I'm going to try and address it in this video. But P. Keopes, I'm going to just, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. I'm just going to also address this in this video as well. So what I want to do is I want to go to, let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's just show you this can in our method. So let's go there. All right. So I just got my home controller there. And what that's going to be. Just in a sec, we're going to deal with that. Now, the thing is, the can that the users are having a problem is with this can right here. Now, I'm going to die and dump this method, this whole uh, piece of code in a sec. But I want to show you where this actually comes from. So if we go to our user model, you guys remember that we created a couple of traits. If you remember, in, if you follow, we got a has author, hashtags, and then as timestamps. Now the thing is the user model right here is actually coming with a couple of traits with Laravel out of the box. All right. So the user model extends to authenticatable. Just make sure that your user model have this in. So if it does have this in, then in under authenticatable class, under authorizable right here, this is the comp this is the trace basically what I'm talking about. So if you go into that, so into that authorizable trade right there, you will see it uses the, uh, it's under the Illuminate Foundation auth access. You must never change anything. I just want to make a comment, uh, note here. Under your framework in the, your vendor folder right here, don't change any of the code right here. Okay, so this must only be changed. If you change anything, if you upgrade, this will be overwritten and all that kind of stuff. And you don't want to run into unnecessary issues. All right, but I just want to show you where this comes from. Under authorizable trade right there, you will see the can method right here. This is the method that we're actually calling on when we go to our is admin. All right, so under the authenticated user, then we call on the can method. All right. Now I'm going to die and dump this part right here to show you what it actually returns. All right. So let's go to our home controller and let's go to the user right here. Okay. So if we go and die and dump, let me just put a semicolon there. Otherwise we get an error. Let's go to our browser quickly. All right. So in here, I'm locked in as John Doe. So if I refresh the browser, you will see, okay, we didn't, let me just make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Okay, as you can see, we obviously didn't import the class. So let's go and import that class quickly. So as you can see, we import the facade auth right there. Okay. So let's go back, refresh. All right. As you can see what it done, it returned basically that authenticated user. All right. Now, what this does is it shows us the user with the ID two, the bio, even the fillables. You guys remember when we did the fillables? This is basically the fillables that's showing there, the hidden parts. I'm not going to show you all those, discuss all of those, but it basically it brings us the user back, all right? So it brings us that authenticated user, all right? So let's go back to the browser again to Visual Studio Code. Now, if we add this can right here, now this can is like I said, it goes to our models right here. So it, that trade is basically now accessible by the user as if, is, if it is like a method that we created inside that model itself, because it's just a trade with methods in it, but it uh, the user model basically have access to that trade methods. All right. So, Make sure that you your model right here extends authenticatable and inside that this comes default that this is part of it. All right. Now let's go to this part right here and let's add 
the user policy admin and the user class right there let's go in here let's add that in there obviously make sure that we import it at the top right there now this part right here the user model just make sure when you import it at the top don't import the illuminate foundation author user right here don't do import this guy import your model okay just make sure you import that right there okay now let's die and dump this method and you will see what it returns okay so if we refresh basically as you can see it returns a value of false now basically what it is doing it is checking our user policy so let's go back it's checking our user policy now our user policy is saying if this user is an admin user it brings in that user model right here this model right here the user right here so it's passing that authenticated user that we just dined and dumped right there it did matching into the policy now if the user is admin now if we go to our admin method it's checking if the user has a type of three all right now i can change this let me just do this and just return true okay let's just return true all right so basically if we let me just let me just quickly recap all right so in our home controller right there we just dying to dump that all right as you can see we got our user policy and admin and things like that now under user policy i basically said if it returned true and if we go to our browser you will see that it will return true now what it does is actually just checking if that user policy returns a true or a false statement all right so if that turns true then basically if it turns let's return false so basically it gives us a boolean yes or no all right so if we go back and we refresh you will see it says no this user cannot if this is true then it will continue if it's not then yes all right so that's all that does but we have some logic in our controller so basically what we're doing now is we're just checking for the authenticated user and the authenticated user will be basically we're making sure that type so if we die and dump let's just go to our home controller again if we die and dump again the authenticated user let's refresh this you will see the type right here a type of one all right so that authenticated user we check the type as well because the type get passed through to it all right so the thing is i'm just showing you guys what where it is and what the problem might be but as i don't have access to your code maybe you can fix it now because you kind of know where everything is just go to your user model uh, let's go to our user model make sure that it extends authenticatable now in the authenticatable class right here this right here this class that we have here all right now this extends basically the authorizable right here okay and under authorizable trade we got a can method right there all right hopefully this helps you some people to understand where it comes from i might not fix it for you but maybe you can diagnose it now on your own all right now the next part that i want to show another user had a problem with let's go to our database let's just do this database uh, factories threat factory right there now he created did the factory like this this you calling on a method right here and we didn't create a method now just call on the fake it like this without the parentheses at the end because there's no static methods in the thread factory right here okay or normal bumpy functions okay i'm calling it methods and uh, functions interchangeably sometimes but just uh, do it without the parentheses okay so hopefully this helps someone and just to understand a little bit more where this can comes from you see if this is false see because this statement basically comes let's say if it's true 
So let me just copy this down. Just to explain it a little bit more. Probably I'll be explaining things right now. But it's all for the concept of learning. So basically if this ret it returns, let's say false. Okay. So because that's basically the statement. That's what it will do. It will go and check the authenticated user and it will check the policy. If that statement returns false, this is basically what will be written in there. False. Okay, so if it's false, then do this. If it's true, then do this. Okay, that's all this does. This just looks a little bit fancy, but all it does, we're just checking the authenticated user. Then we check the policy if it returns true or false against the user class. That's all it does. All right. Okay. Another way that you can actually write this. Let me just, this is basically just a fancy way to check our policies and our user class. Now, if you don't like this, let me show you another way. All right, let's do it like this. Now, instead of this, because we just want a true or false statement here. All right. So now, not necessarily actually because otherwise, what is the point of creating a policy? But for argument's sake, let's use the same auth, auth guard. All right. But instead of the guard, we just want to use the user. All right. So if the user is authenticated, then we just want to check if the user is an admin. All right. Then we're calling basically on that static method that we just created. Why is this giving me error? I know why, because we've got two methods in here. Let me just comment that one out. Right, so now we've got another method. This is more probably a more simpler way, all right? So basically what we're doing is now we're using authenticated user, all right? We're calling on that user that we just called in here, that user right there. But what we want to do, we want to check if that user is an admin. Now, if we go to our models, right? Let's open our model. Uh, model, uh, user model right there again. So. You guys remember that we created is admin, all right? So we want to check if that type is basically, yes, true or false, all right? So that's basically what we're doing right here. So if we go to our home controller, so I already created that right there, a die and dump, okay? So this right here, just to kind of show you if it returns true or false, okay? So let's let's go there quickly. All right, so nobody's logged in. Let's So let's log in as an admin. So admin at example.com and password. Okay, so let's lock in quickly. Right, as you can see, let's go to our home right here. As you can see, it returns true because we are locked in as an admin. So basically, that returns the, more, the same thing as our user policy, but our user policy is more thorough, meaning that we can add a little bit more things to it and stuff like that if we want to. All right, so our user policy handles that. All right, now let's log out quickly. Let's just log out. Uh, admin on null, obviously, because uh, let me just uncomment it quickly. Because it requires the authenticated user. All right, so let's try and log in. Apologies for the dog. So the next thing that we want to do, let's log in as John. John at example dot com and obviously the password so let's log in now as you can see let's just die and dump now let's do this okay so let's die and dump and if we refresh let's go to our home page you'll see it returns a value of false okay so if we go back let's just delete this now so if we go back to our is admin, it will basically just check if the authenticated user is an admin or not. If it's an admin, it will basically return the request. If it's not, it will just say forbidden. Okay. So that's basically what this happens now. All right. So this is our middleware just checking. But I will still use this, but you can use this as well. So let's go back to, as you can see, our user right here doesn't have access to all those other rounds because we're still using the is admin check. Now, the thing is, what we want to do now is manually go to a route that the admin can only go to. So it's admin slash categories, right? And see if we get that forbidden error. 
this one right here, the 403 forbidden. Okay, because if it if that doesn't show, then it means this doesn't work. Okay, so in here, let's go to admin slash categories. All right. Now, as you can see, it gives us the 403 forbidden. So it just shows that it works. So you can use do the either or, but if you use the other way, it just means your user policy is in effect. So it's no point of creating the policy, but the policy is actually useful if you want to create additional methods inside your policy, like delete and all that kind of other stuff. We can will actually update our user policy as we go along. All right, because not everything is inside our is admin class right here in our method right here. This is just a static method. So let's go to our user, not this, our user model. So as you can see, it only checks for this, but if we do create a user policy, we can actually add additional constraints in our policy. All right, but for now, uh, the video is getting a little bit too long. So that's just more or less it. So if this is giving you a problem, you can do this as well. But the problem is later on, when we update our user policy, you guys will have a little bit of a problem because the additional methods that we're going to create in our policy will not be available for to check our is admin class. All right. So that's it for this, guys. I just wanted to address because we're all here to learn. So I just wanted to show you the different things and stuff like that in this video. I'm just going to comment this out and leave it here, but I'm going to use my original method right there. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Please, if you have any questions or maybe any help, the uh, reason why this is giving an error to the other users and you find a solution for your problem, please let us know so that we can all learn from it because I haven't experienced that issue. All right. Thank you guys and see you in the next one. Goodbye.